Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's the first day of spring and I'm so itching to be outside. I have a lot of flower beds and I love to garden. And one of the other things that I love to do is make some garden signs. So I made one for you today out of a piece of plain wood. Do you have any wood that's like this laying around and you want it to look grungy, like it's been there for a million years? Follow along and I'll show you how. If you need any DIY products or IOD, you can step on over to my website at thepaintedphotographer.com and I'll ship it right to your front door. And until I see you at the end, enjoy the video. We're gonna make a new board into an old sign. So right here, I'm using up my queen bee that I have in here. So I watered it down a little bit. I'm just going ahead. DIY paint is so pigmented that you can really like 10 to one and you're still gonna have good coverage because it just, it has really good pigment. So this is very, watered down paint so I can get everything, all that goodness out of the bottom of my container. This one, we're gonna do the same thing. This is an old two by four. It has holes in it. So it has lots of holes in it on that side, but we're gonna pay attention to this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and just paint this yellow on the top for right now. If you feel like your board needs a second coat, you can go ahead and give it a second coat. Doesn't take long for this stuff to dry. You can leave it dry a little bit longer than I am, but I don't really, it doesn't bother me if it doesn't have a really good second coat. And it is fresh wood, so it just soaks right in there. Easy peasy. Okay, then we're gonna use some of this. We have some holes we need to fill in. So I'm gonna take just a spatula. This one's probably not the spatula you're used to seeing when you mud in holes. Our paint is still wet, I don't care. It's really perfectly fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in those holes. So the spackle, is that what it's called? Yeah, the spackling is going to leave a little bit of texture on our board. And when I filled in another board, this is when I found this process and just adding some texture to these new boards, making them look old. So there, this one, I'm not gonna do that. Just in case you wanna skip this process, you can just use a plain old board and we're still gonna make it look old. Now we're gonna let that dry. When that all dries up, go ahead and knock all the high points off of it and then go back in with your base color. Now your board, has so much texture to it. It no longer looks like a brand new board. We're gonna add some age to this new board. And for those of you that don't have any textured stamps, this is a deal. This is vintage textiles, and there's four different vintage stamps in there. This is fantastic. I didn't open one of these because I already have that. I love that. I already have this and I already have this. So having three out of the four, I just feel like it's not worth my purchase. But if you don't have them yet, totally worth your purchase. So we're going to use the Distress. So the Distress they used to make in a full solid sheet. So this is one full solid sheet of Distress. If, if you do buy these, my advice would be to cut them into four. So leave them on the backer 
and cut them into four pieces. This one I have never taken off of the backer because you just really don't need to. So it's nice and stiff and it's not so flimsy. So we're gonna use that one. We need to mix up some paint though. I need like a rust color because I need my sign to be old and like it's metal kind of rusty. So we're gonna use some Summer Crush, DIY Summer Crush. And I'm gonna put that out onto a mylar. Then we're gonna use just any kind of brown. Whatever brown you have, you need to make that rust just a little bit more dark, more brown. And then we're gonna mix them up. You don't have to mix them up real well. I kind of actually like them not mixed up so good. I'm gonna add just a bit more Summer Crush and not mix it up. Then you're gonna take your IOD brayer and get a little bit of paint on there. I got too much, so I'm gonna smooth it all off on my board here. And I'm gonna go ahead and take my distressed stamp. And this is why that one small sheet would be plenty because you don't have to use the entire thing. When you're using paint on a stamp, it dries a lot quicker than ink. So you gotta be fast. So now we're just going to go and plop this on. and you got a little bit of rust. We're gonna turn it so our rust isn't going all in the same direction. Now we stamped it twice. We're gonna want to re-ink it, repaint it. This is why that one on there on the textiles that I don't have is where I really like it because it's a perfect distress for rust. Okay, I'm gonna go over here again just because I feel like the second stamp wasn't dark enough. So look at that. We got some good old fashioned rust. I'm gonna do this board. Same process, except I'm gonna go into that orange a little bit more. This one we can do in one swipe. There we go. This one had that added texture to it already. It's perfect. Now I have a few more boards that I need to do, so I'm gonna stop this video, take care of the rest of my boards with this excess ink, and I'll be right back. We're gonna go back in with this mixture and my paint spatula. This is all dry now, and it doesn't have as much distress as I'd like. I like my edges to be a little bit more distressed. So we're gonna run this paint spatula, especially around the edges. Don't be afraid if you get too much, cause you can sand it off or wet distress it off, whichever you like. So rust is really unpredictable. And I try and make it look real natural like by just sloppily putting it on there. We're gonna do this one as well. This one is gonna hit those high bumps because of the plaster that we put on it to make some more texture. There we got it, some more rust. We're gonna be using the typesetting IOD stamp. This is my favorite stamp for letters. I can't tell you how many times I use this stamp. And then there's also farmhand, retro, and scroll. But this is by far my favorite. If you'd like this stamp, head over to my website and order it. It'll be so worth it and money. So we're gonna do fresh cut lavender on here. 
I just think that that's going to be really sweet. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off my letters, the ones that I need. And you can watch this process. So I just put them on here. They're clean. You want to make sure your stamps are clean when you do this process because you're going to spell it out. And we have to make sure this fits. So we're going to scoot it over a bit. You don't have to make sure those letters are straight because I'm going to show you a real sweet way to do it. Then we're going to spell lavender out with the big letters. Sometimes your board isn't long enough, so we'll try and figure out what other flower name to use to put on here. But right now, I'm going to show you how I go ahead and I pick these up. So I'm just going to lay this down on the back of that stamp, and the thin mount picks them all up. Now you can put them on the grid line and make them nice and straight. That's why you don't have to worry about how straight they are. Now they're nice and straight. We're gonna use the stone gray ink and the IOD ink pad. I used the heck out of this yesterday, so I'm gonna have to re-ink my stamp. So I'll show you how I do that. You just go ahead and add some ink to your stamp pad and then once you think you have enough on it, I stop pushing and no ink comes out anymore. And I just make sure that it's all even distributed on that ink pad. You only have to do that every so often. The ink will last you a long time. So on here, on the thin mount, we have the word fresh. We're going to go ahead and ink that up. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you get all of your letters and you get a nice even coat on them. Turn it over, line it up. We're gonna line it up kind of in this same area and stamp the word fresh. My line is straight right here on my thin mount and my line is straight up here on my thin mount. So therefore, since your word is on your line, your word will be straight and not at a downhill angle. There's the word fresh. I already have cut on my other thin mount. I take a thin mount and I cut it into three pieces. So I have one long piece and two shorter pieces. Now we're gonna line this up as best we can because I didn't put it on the same line and I have a plan of adding some other elements to my sign. So I'm gonna stay over to this side of the board. I got a big space over here and none over here, but that's okay. We're gonna add some more elements. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you push down on your stamp and you don't wiggle it. So there's fresh cut. 
Now, while I was working, I decided I was going to use the word dahlias. This is my other thin mount that is the match to these. How does it go? Right like that. So I got the, the three pieces out of there. This one is still not long enough. All right, so there we go. We're missing the A and the S on the end, but that's okay. We're gonna stamp this, ink this up. We have to get it over kind of far because we still got an A and an S to put on here. So I'm gonna line it up right here which will make my word straight. I'm gonna go ahead and push all of my letters on to make sure I have good inking. And I also let it soak into that dry paint. Then remove it. Now I'm going to take the letters off except for my A. and add my S. The AS is gonna go right here. So now we're gonna re-ink it. And line that up as best we can using the grid lines on the words right here, on the letters right here, and then also on the side of the board. That's why this thin mount is such a useful tool when it comes to making signs. Fresh cut dahlias. And now I feel like I want something else down here, so I'm gonna put open daily. I'll do that in a time lapse and you can watch my process. Now we have to sand down the sign and give it a little bit more distress. So I take my 120 grit sandpaper on my DeWalt sander and I'm outside. I'm absolutely loving this nice weather we're having and just sanding over the entire thing. I want to make sure those letters don't look as crisp and clean as they were before. And so I also do my bulbs sign. When I sand over that, the plaster comes right through. So I think my fix for that would be for you to color your plaster. If you've watched me before, you know I have a dirty big top and that means I took from my clean jar and I dumped a little bit in here. And now when I dip my brush in here, I won't contaminate my whole big jar. But the first thing you wanna do is when you sand something with an electric sander, it has a lot of pigment on it. It has a lot of dust, see? So if you take that big top, since it's water-based, it's just going to smear that dust around. So make sure you get this as clean as you possibly can. It'll make your project just that much better. Now we're gonna dip into the big top and using a real quick method, we're gonna go over it and that concentrate too much on the coverage because we're going to go over it again later. And if you scrub on it, that will also activate the DIY paint. 
so you don't want to scrub. Just go over it quickly, and if anything, you can come over with a second coat. So there we are. I think we have it clear coated, and we're going to go on to our next step. I wanted to add another element to this sign and I'm using the IOD wallflowers transfer. I absolutely love this. Look at that big bloom. I'd love to put that on there, but yeah, I can't. It's too big. So anyway, I'm pulling out all my little pieces. I had this one little piece from the Stores and Harrison transfer that I did. And so I put that just solid line underneath fresh cut just to add another element to my sign. And then I also took the wallflower transfer and I added some of those stems and tried to figure out where to put them before I actually lay them down onto the board. But this pink flower was just calling my name and wanting to be on there. I needed some leaves underneath it. So when you want to layer transfers, you want to put that you want to put your leaves on first to make sure they're underneath the flower. So I went ahead and put this scrolly little leaf underneath there. And I took the, the mount that it was on and I just burnished it. I cut a straight edge on this flower and added it to the top of the sign. So it's going to layer over top of that leaf stem and give it a nice element. So you're gonna take the IOD tool and you're just going to rub onto the transfer. You're gonna see when it turns to a different color that it's actually adhering to the board versus the plastic sheet that it's on. So this was really fun. I added many different items, kind of keeping them so that they were similar, added a little pink to the bottom and added a little pink to the other side, some green leaves, and just added all those different little elements that makes this sign just a little bit more unique. All right, one more element. We're gonna take the IOD black ink on the crackle stamp and we're gonna lightly tickle that crackle stamp, turning it in different directions onto the board 
and giving that a second, third, fourth texture, whichever one, I'm not counting um, in case you are. We're gonna add that to the board and give it that added texture. I just love when we keep putting layers on top of layers and giving it that old million years look. So here it is. We're gonna also do that two by four with the bulbs and press that crackle stamp into that two by four and give that another dimension. Another thing I like to do is take my IOD ink pad and go around the edge of the board and giving it that age, that kind of a burnt look around the edge of the board as well. So you can just take this ink pad and just lightly press it on the edge of the board. And then also I like to drag it over the board and give some kind of shadows and dimension to the board, especially where areas where I think that there'd be like a shadow line. So where I put this added this um, transfer line, I wanted it to be a little bit shadowed. So I took my ink pad and just slightly hit underneath there. We want there. these to have just one more layer of age and I need to sand off some of this transfer and just rough it up a little bit. I don't like that transfer to look so brand new. So I'm going to rough it up just a little bit. Now another coat of the DIY Big Top to seal that transfer in and all those new elements that we did. One more step and we're going to call it good for this garden sign. This is a lot of work. Dark and decrepit DIY. Love this stuff. So the Big Top is dry. Completely dry. I have the dark and decrepit and I'm going to dip my brush in just a little bit and darken up my sides. All of them at the same time. When you're on the ends with the cut board, it takes a little bit more dark and decrepit than it does on the not cut ends. So cover that board up completely, then lay it flat and blend in those edges that you seeped over the side. Blend those in. And then you can take a baby wipe and wipe some of it off. You just aged your sign a little bit more and you have some nice dark edges. Now we'll do the other small one. This one has some pretty wide edges. I'm gonna go ahead and dark and decrepit the whole thing. I like to be have some straight lines when I do this. This edge takes on a little bit more dark and decrepit. Also doesn't show brush strokes as much. You can make this end easier by adding a little bit of water. Spray it. Now we're gonna come over this entire sign because I got some of that white sticking out and I wanna cover it up. I wanna age it. And then we're gonna come back with our baby white and wipe some of that off. We have a nice aged sign. 
So at the beginning, did you think I got my inspiration from somewhere in this area? Well, you're right, because this is the finished sign and that's my inspiration. I have a couple of old doors on my porch that I absolutely love. I love this yellow one. This green and orange one is also a good favorite. I've never painted them. That's how I got them. So this sign is what we made today. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll be back with my next thrift haul. So until next time, happy painting.